Today everybody knows me all over the world. But they don't know that this woman stayed with me when I was not around. It was not because I was a rolling stone. I was working in the oil industry. And they posted me away from home. And I can't be carrying her and the children to, to hop around. Do you understand? So what we normally do in the oil industry is that you choose a city you want to stay. If not, you're... Okay, like now, I did uh, JSS 1 to 3 in one school. And I did JSS SS 1 to 3 in another school. Do you know my problem now? I don't remember my secondary school mates. Because I didn't stay with them for six years. Do you understand? You don't know my problem. You don't know my problem. You don't know my problem. So somebody will say, ah, we were in GS2. Because I spent only two, uh, three years there. And I don't want the same problem to happen to my children. I already know what I'm facing. I want them to know the people they grew up with. Me, I, me I'm just there like, like a rolling stone. I stayed only three years in the other school and then I tried to find out who were my classmates. It's difficult. So I don't want to hop around with my children so that they, 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 they won't know their history. Do you, you get it? So we had to stay in the city that God was calling us to do ministry. I had to leave them there. And then I'll be going and coming back. Sometimes four months I've not come back. And that was how it was for 11 years. My absence taught her how to pray. It was silent. That one is not on Facebook. Some people have not done up to how many years they are on, they are on Facebook talking about marriage. You are a liar. You are a fraud. With face cap. May the Lord have mercy on you. I was not at home for 11 years. And after 11 years, I came back. I saw my mom. saw my son. They are very intelligent children. And she did not turn my children against me. It is now my children are trying to get close to me. I'm trying to. She covered that space. And it was already written in my destiny that that gap would be there. And God looked for. May you follow his perception. Yeah. Do you know how many ladies told me that Baba has spoken to them that they are my wife? You, you not, you, I don't want to go into that. Prophecy came, prophecy everywhere. But I was bailed out by what? By perception. 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 So Jesus will perceive what is on the heart of the Father. That is what he does. You might say it's not the right thing to do. You might say it's not the politically correct thing to do. But that's what Jesus, Jesus is not trying to impress you. He's not trying to be on Facebook or, or, or be a star in the media. Jesus just wants to do what he has seen his father do. So operating by the measure of the spirit that is upon your heart determines that you must wait on God until he furnishes his what? His perception. If you operate that way, you will be leaving out a script that God has already written in the heavens. And your life will not be an accident. It will be a curve of the manifestations of those things that have been written concerning you. Is that clear? So Jesus said, as I see my, what I see my father do, that's what I do. The spirit of God on your inside gives you the ability to perceive the things of God. So you can see your father, you can see Jesus, what he wants when he expresses his displeasure, snap out. In, in these days now that um, many preachers in Nigeria want to connect with me. Alright, so the way I do it, and I've made mistakes before, I've accepted people without checking with God. 
And then when I'm trying to relate with them, my peace will not be in place. Do you understand? But I've already I started relating with them. Then I go back to God and pray and say, can you cause one problem? Just bring one problem. Let me, let me use that problem as an excuse to escape. He always answers it. Cause a problem. Some of, some of you need to pray that prayer when we are praying. Baba, cause problem here. Yeah. Because I want to live according to the script of what is written. It is what I see Jesus doing. That is what I do. Can we? For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So him whose breath is in you becomes the one whose life that you must live. I think I will need to stop here. There are still other issues. But if I say too much, you will forget. So we'll stop here. First of all, is the cross. You must allow the cross to cross out your ambitions, your preferences, your style. Hmm? Then, perception. You are here, you are in uni -Ben, you are in final year. If not for the strike, you would have graduated. I, you know what you need to begin to do? Begin to ask God. After school, what next? If you prayed long enough, and that kind of prayer, it will take you like 11 months to get a very solid answer. You see, you, you don't like... Hallelujah. Are you, are you with me? Now, let me tell you, I am a spiritual man. I'm not a baby spiritually. You can benefit from me by, by tapping from my experience. It is through my experience that I'm telling you what I'm telling you. It's even there to help you. If you meet people that are not spiritual, they can't even give you a clue. To take you 11 months. Because if God wants a man to succeed, what he does to him is that he gives him direction. Without direction, even you can be anointed and without direction, you will be a mess. If you know what life means, you will know that direction is in the core of, de of destiny. Take your time. You guys are young. I saw you people, the workers. I prayed for you from my heart, all the people I prayed for. Do you know what? Seek direction. Seek now. God will give you a clue that your husband is like this and like this and he's not like this. All the people that are the way he say he will not, he will not be. Plenty of them will come to you. But direction is going to cancel out the confusion. Because the average person here is confused about who to marry. It's because you did not seek direction. Go and press. Our God speaks. He's alive. He will furnish his will upon your heart. And give you wisdom. So that you can, you can be disconnected from distraction. I was just speaking with my wife after we had uh, one of the nights. I was, I, we were doing permutation. For how long are we going to be strong like this? We pegged it at 70. Till 70. So we know how many years it took it. What are we going to use these years for? Because the moment we finished from the meeting, we felt a sense of urgency. We had to come and take stock. These years, what are we going to use it? Now the anointing has come, the authority has come. She now brought one of the important things is health. Because if you are anointed and you die, the anointing will travel. It's okay. Health. Right. So, we took some decisions on that. Are you there? I, I slept on that. I woke up. Because as I was meditating, I was checking all my friends. The ones that I call friends. To know if there's one that has escaped in that the Lord did not. You understand? Check. And I was preparing more commitment for people that are my sons so that they can fulfill their ministry and manifest their measure. Because one man can't do this job now. You know now. We need a legion of men. Legion. Legion of men that fear God. Not just rascals looking for opportunity.
we began to evaluate. So our prayer points have come out of our little evaluation because we want to be accurate. Do you think like that? That's how wise men think. That's how wise men think. God preserving our lives. Huh? Hmm. In the next 10 years, if God preserves our lives, you will know that God dwells in Africa. Watch it. Watch it. I have received perception. As I preach to you, one of the benefits I get is when we come during the worship sessions and the prayer sessions. Oh, the anointing that is on the house, I begin to tap into it to try to find what is on the heart of God. So I've gotten it, my own personal challenge from the conference. I've gotten what I will be working on after this conference. There were windows of mercy that opened over me and I received perceptions. That's what spiritual men look for. Perceptions. Each one of us in this place can become a giant. If only you are diligent to secure what? I want to stop there today. Um, part of our mission is to restore accurate Christianity in our generation. Some people think that pursuing money is equal to Christianity. That uh, the way we measure your compliance with God is by your vehicle, how many nations you have traveled. That's darkness. That is the, it's, it's falling. That's falling Christianity. Now, so we are, we are coming to deliver Christianity the way the apostles pioneered it, the way Jesus established it. Because we understand that the focal point of the revival that will infiltrate the world is Africa, that is in our own generation. So we need to labor on the continent of Africa in discipleship, in apostolic teaching, in ex exemplary living to bring Africa to that point where we can fill up the gap of missionary manpower and take the gospel back to the West from whence it came. Some of you sitting here today, when you are thoroughly equipped, you will find yourself on the streets of Arizona, in the United States of America, casting out devils and holding intercessory meetings. And Yeah, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Because you will go to the streets of Arizona and you will not find Jesus anywhere close. So you will become the lamp that will bring the witness that will turn the hearts of men back to God again. The missionaries of our time will come from the continent of Africa and that's why we are striving, we are spending resources, spending ourselves to see that the least among us becomes as strong as David. It's a kingdom dream. We saw it on the heart of God. That's what he wants to do and that's what our lives will be spent to achieve. As I see my father, what I see him do, that is what I do. I don't have an ambition. I don't have an agenda. I'm not looking for money. In fact, the Naira is weak. Not looking for money. I was in the oil industry for 16 years. We're using that money to push the gospel. I am comfortable. Me and my wife and my children are comfortable to dwell in a hut. If that is what at least we'll be waking up, rains will not the elements won't beat on us. We have lived way, way smaller than our financial size so that we can have enough to push the gospel and we have done that until this day. Until this day. I know how many houses my friends have, the ones that are my juniors. Have a house, have a house in, in Kasina, in Kaduna, in Abuja, in Lagos. When you finish on this world, that's when you will know that God did not send you to buy houses. I was on my knees in prayer. When God spoke to me, it was God that spoke to me. He said, eh, that's your wife's school. Because when I was cutting her, she said she has a vision to build, to have a school. It was God that told me, that's your wife's school. Begin to build it now. Not me that told him. He, I was just praying. And when God said I should build the school, we had no money. You understand what I'm talking about? 
And I remember I had two thousand dollars in one account. So we went and liquidated. First bank say, first bank my account. They have four branches. They say they don't have up to two thousand dollars in in the four branches. That we should go to Boko. So we took a trip to Boko. That's how we got two thousand. We changed and began to build, because God say, what? Do you know that that money did not finish till that school was built? It didn't finish. And one day I was praying on the on the top floor of the school, and I was seeing um, because we developed a Christian curriculum. A is not for Apple. A is for Abraham. Yes. So that unconsciously as you are growing through the system, you will you are being disciple, but you are not aware. Yeah. So I, I I was on the top floor and I was seeing people coming to drop their children and I now say, God, so if, if we did not do this, what will happen to these children? As I see the, my father do, that is what. After we finished building the embassy, I was on my knees again praying. He said, now you are qualified to have a house. I said, I'm qualified. Yeah. So and I said, okay, let us lay the foundation of the house before the rains come. What I wanted to do in, in the house is just foundation this year. The next year, we begin to build. The house has been roofed. God approves when I do things for myself. So the fact that there's money doesn't mean anything will change. For in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. Now you got, now you got it. We are going to pray. Don't live for yourself. No. The gifts of God on your life will never come out if you are living for yourself live for Jesus. And you know what he will do? He will take you into greatness beyond what you can do for yourself. All the people those days that used to collect bribes while we were at work and uh, you know I, I look back and I couldn't see them. For the first time in my life, a nation invited me, paid for ticket, and said, please come, come to us. A nation, I mean the government of the nation. For me to come out of the, the airport, when I was coming out of the airport, uh, if not that there, there were protocol people around trying to protect me, the, the, it became something else. Okay, when I wanted to leave, I carried my bag and I just, I entered one corner to escape. One man just came and heard me and started crying. Me and I was speaking, so as he was crying, I was speaking in tongues. We were there for 45 minutes. White people will come and pass and look at me like, you make you look tired. I, waiting, what I'm doing here is, is my life. He started crying. We were there for 45 minutes in, in the center of an airport waiting lounge. See, there is, no, there is no desire for greatness you have that will best that which God wants to do in your life. No desire for greatness. No desire for greatness. So a few weeks ago, my mother and aunt called me and said, I did not know that I'd, eventually you will become our father. I did, my mother, the one that gave birth to me, and I'm the fifth born. He said, I did not know that you will become our father. <laughs> and those are the most difficult people to convince. Those people. <laughs> I did not know our father. I mean, 
we are just starting. Allow God, allow Him. He will bring you out in your brightest colors. Make you matter when it matters most. He will cause your face to shine. He will put the solution to the problems of nations on your mouth. For the Bible says, out of Zion shall come forth the law. We're going to pray this morning and say, Lord, we don't want to live for ourselves. We want to live for you. So that the Holy Spirit will manifest through us everything that is written concerning our lives and our destiny. Your faith takes you yonder because the Holy Ghost is going to be your navigator. You are going beyond your expectation. You are going beyond your wildest dreams. You are going to fulfill the dream of heaven and the dream of God. For in him we live and in him we move and in him we have our being. That's why we come to church so that you can be pointed to the manual of how your life was intended by God to be lived. Barados, <laughs> Yalo baseli mondeni. Oh, Jesus! A new thing is about to happen in the earth. God has chosen you. He want to guide you by his spirit. You will become a strong nation. to live out that you, which you have written give us the courage to discard the ways of the flesh and the ways of darkness We want to fulfill your script. We want to manifest what you have written. never to miss our way.
That is why we came. That we might find grace. Your voice will be heard. Man may not know us, but heaven will rejoice over us again and again. Rising up with power. 